Break out your roll of quarters when Hagar, Guy, and Cody fight Mad Gear, thugs, and crooked cops with the help of a new ally to find Jessica. It's all right here in our review of Final Fight Number 2 from Udon Entertainment. See you in three. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Final Fight Number 2. Writer Matt Moylan has the right idea in Final Fight Number 2. Video game adaptations get a bad rap because too many writers will try to update the source material for modern audiences or try to put a different spin on a winning formula. Moylan smartly gives readers a comic that brings a video game to life with the right spirit and energy that made the original successful. Don't mess with success. But before we dig in, let's take a look at what happened the last time with our fine fighters from Metro City in Final Fight Number 1. The city's toughest gang, Mad Gear, kidnapped Mayor Mike Hagar's daughter to gain leverage over the mayor and force him to allow their criminal activities to proceed unchecked. Mike Hagar doesn't negotiate with scum, so he called in his old mates, Guy and Cody, to track the kidnappers down. The issue ended with an all-out brawl spilling into the subway systems below the city streets. That brings us to our current issue, Final Fight Number 2. The fight against Mad Gear and the race to save Jessica continues. We begin with Mayor Mike Hagar trouncing all comers aboard a subway train. At first, Hagar holds his own, but the numbers become overwhelming. Mad Gear decides to make an example of Hagar with an unscheduled stop. Again, here, Matt Moylan has the right idea. Hagar is physically huge, so it would be easy for Moylan to portray him as an unstoppable Hulk, which would make for pretty boring storytelling. Here, Moylan shows Hagar isn't unstoppable, which injects an element of danger into the story. Even though he's big and even though he's the hero, he can be taken down. Elsewhere, Guy and Cody speed along on their bikes to catch up with the subway train on the streets above. Suddenly, they're stopped at a gunpoint by a cop responding to a, shall we say, a concerned citizen report from Mad Gear members. The cop is dirty, and our fighters don't have time for niceties, so the rumble begins. During the fight, the dirty cop asks his partner to give him a gun to put Cody down for good. The partner, Officer Lucia Morgan, won't help her partner break the law, so she sides with Guy and Cody as one of the few good cops left in Metro City. Moylan sets the scene perfectly to show that Guy and Cody aren't goody-two-shoes when the situation calls for it, and he introduces the classic character Lucia to the mix as a new character to the story, an ally for our heroes. Again, these are popular characters doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing, so you don't need to mess with success to make it work. Later, Mad Gear tosses Hagar into an underground wrestling ring to force him out of retirement. His first opponent? Sodom the Samurai. Mike takes his cuts but he ultimately defeats Sodom, prompting the frenzied crowd of criminals to rush the ring. Before Hagar is overwhelmed and torn apart, he escapes when a mysterious duo takes out the lights from a secluded corner of the room. Yep, yep, you heard that right. Ooh, we, get some, we get some mystery and some intrigue here. Moylan slyly introduces two more classic characters to the mix. We're not going to spoil it here. We're going to leave it for you to read it and find out for yourself. But those introductions increase the intrigue because it adds some mystery and some curiosity, which is great and adds some fan service, which is in this case is done right. Fan service done right is a good thing. On the streets above, Guy, Cody, and Lucia continue the fight against Lucia's now former partner and his gang of concerned citizens. Suddenly, Hagar arrives to rush the crowd and tip the scales. We conclude the issue with jail time, talk of a scrap metal yard, and that should get everybody excited, and meeting the big boss. On the whole, Final Fight number 2 100% works for one simple reason. Matt Moylan understands the story of the original game and repeats that formula of success. When adapting classic properties, that's all a creator really needs to do. Let's switch gears and talk about the art for a second. Video games are a visual medium. Comic books are a visual medium. So it would make sense that you get an art team that learns to adapt one to the other and still maintain some sort of consistency in the visual aesthetic. Here, Matthew Weldon and Espen Grundenhjern, hopefully I'm saying that right, hit a home run in this issue for taking the side-scrolling characters up 10 notches with powerful character designs that have just enough exaggeration to inject a spirit of whimsy and fantasy. This is, in effect, this is a crime drama, but there's a little bit of a fantasy element to it. The action looks great, and the whole issue pops with vibrant action and eye-catching colors. Let's take a step back and look at the bigger picture so we're introduced here to Lucia Morgan, who is not a new character for the Final Fight fans, but this is her first appearance in the series. 
technically speaking, if you look at the video game series on which the comic is based, Lucia doesn't premiere until Final Fight number 3, which is the third video game in the series. So her, her appearance here is ahead of schedule, but still very much welcome, and her introduction is done organically and perfectly. Final thoughts, what do we think about Final Fight number 2 from Udon Entertainment? It takes everything you love about the classic video game franchise, repeats what works, and wraps it in a rock-solid action story. Moylan demonstrates a pitch-perfect understanding of how to adapt a classic property, and the art team nailed the visuals. Therefore, Final Fight number 2 earns a 9 out of 10. At the risk of sounding redundant <laughs> and, and the broken record, classic properties endure because there's something about them that resonates with an audience. An adaptation that preserves that certain something is almost guaranteed to be successful. But what do you think? Do you like adaptations that are faithful? Or do you prefer modern twists that change what you understand about it to kind of give you a new perspective? Leave a thumbs up if you like adaptations and drop a comment below with which video game series Udon should tackle next. Also, remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review, to check out the covers and preview pages, and buy this comic to help support the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for joining, and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.